you know, yesterday was the national signing date. It was a good day for, for Ole Miss basketball. Obviously, our four commitments uh, all signed, uh, you know, starting with, you know, Jacob Gazzo, a Mississippi kid that's now at Briarcrest in Memphis. Uh, you know, Jacob had a significant injury in the summer. He's doing great. He's fixed to get cleared for five on five and uh, back to full speed. Uh, Josh Hubbard, the number one player in our in our state, uh, you know, been involved with Josh for a long, long time, and uh, explosive athlete, uh, really good shooter. He's won a ton of games. I think he'll probably end up being Mississippi's all time leading scorer after this year. Uh, so excited about having Josh Rashad Marshall. Number one ranked player in, in uh, Arkansas, 6'8", 235 pounds, very physical, athletic, hard nose, skill level is is good. So we think Rashad can come in like the others, can have an immediate impact. And then uh, Jordan now has transferred to Southern California where Amari and Robert Coward played uh, last year. He's played on the post-grad team. He's off to a great start, 6'8". Uh, six nine athletic wing. So both of those, all, all four of those guys, I think, uh, uh, is a great start for us in the early signing period. Uh, proud of our staff and our players and the people that were involved to, to help make that class uh, happen. Uh, kind of moving to to Florida Atlantic. You know, some thoughts. I thought the second half was, was better. Obviously, it's Alcorn, very gamely Alcorn team. Uh, played extremely hard. Uh, offensively, I thought we got in a better rhythm with 45 points in, in the second half. Uh, offensive rebounding was a big key, 21. Uh, probably, you know, played 10, 11, 12 guys in the game. And uh, then after the Alcorn game, I think we've had two really good practices. Need another really good one today uh, to play a good Florida Atlantic team uh, tomorrow night. Jared, go ahead. Kermit, I know after the Alcorn State game, you listed uh, Deshaun Ruffin as doubtful. If you don't mind updating us on his status. Yep. Uh, he will not play in the game uh, tomorrow night. Still making progress, uh, doing a lot of bone stem on his uh, – on the bone bruise. Uh, but he's feeling better and better and better uh, every day. So uh, I think he's going to go back to the doctor. Uh, hopefully, maybe be tomorrow or, or early, early next week and – can get a better update uh, at that time. And I think you had, I think, 12 out of the 14 players play. One of those, uh, one not playing being Robert Cowherd. Uh, was that a coach's decision or was that an injury-related situation? Or No, coach's decision and, uh, and nothing Robert had done. It's just one of those games. Uh, Robert has worked his tail off, had two really good days of of practice. You know, it's just like everybody knows, it's, it's hard in those kind of games to get even 12 guys Play in time, and so we're trying to figure it out. But but Robert's doing doing well. Had a great attitude. And you talked about in and I think later on in the first half against Alcorn, where you held them without a field goal or scoreless for I think eight straight minutes, but you couldn't generate any offense out of that to really pull away. I mean, as a coach, how do you go about you know correcting that those types of things in practice and leading up into this one? Yeah, I mean, the positive thing was they went eight minutes without scoring, and so you know I, we made a lot of progress defensively from like West Georgia to Alcorn. And uh, in the second half, we made progress defensively. Uh, I just don't think the ball moved as well. I think we settled. I think we played horizontal and not vertical. We went back and offensive rebounded the ball, but uh, I don't think we got the post touches that we needed. We didn't get out in transition uh, and just play as fast and smart as we could. And, uh, you know, uh, points per possession, we were better in the half court than we were in transition. Uh, so that needs to improve tomorrow night. Adam, go ahead. Coach, could you just talk a little bit about how uh, Robert Allen just played in the second half of the game uh, on Monday night? Yeah, he had great energy, uh, didn't he, Adam? I mean, just uh, – you know, I, I really like – I love Robbie's a starter in my mind. I, I love having him come off the bench because he just brings such great energy, and he, he will start from time to time. But I think he's he's a great sixth man to come in, uh, you know, perfect at the foul line, uh, really good defensively, finish some balls uh, around the rim. So it was, it was really good to see him back out there in an active role. David? Hey, Kermit, how are you? Doing good, David. Um, you know, you kind of touched on it post-game, I guess, working in multiple defenses. Um, 
how important is it for you guys to to be multiple there and 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 I guess to, to what extent is, you know, this early part of the season um, going to play in, in developing that ability? Yeah, we do. I mean, we've been mainly a man-to-man team. We played a little one-three-one, just a little uh, kind of full-court press. Uh, I think multiple defenses as we get going uh, is critical. I mean, it, it's harder to play against. Uh, the whole thing when playing multiple defenses is not losing your competitive spirit, your physical play. And uh, so it's something with, with a lot of new guys we've got to get better at. Our one three one's got to get better. <clears throat> Our half-court zone need to fly around more and understand uh, exactly the roles that we play at each spot. Uh, so you're we're always trying to develop those. And, uh, I mean, I, I do think that our – our base defense is going to be a man-to-man, and we'll do different things than that. But, but you're right. Our, our multiple defenses is uh, is not as far along as we need them to be at this point in the season, and we'll keep working at it. Jared, you can go ahead. Wait, David, did you have another question? I'm sorry. Nope, I can put my hand down. Sorry. Uh, go good. ahead, Jared. Um, yeah, I mean, you cut, touched on it a little bit afterwards when we were talking about Robert Allen and him just kind of finally seeing the court, you know, in real game action. You know, I know he's been recovering all the way up until that point, but after, you know, a, a game that kind of actually counts in that and and uh, just kind of to start off the season, was it, you talk about all the emotional conversations. Was that one afterwards just kind of another one on top of the pile? Yeah, no, he, he we just felt good, you know, and we didn't really talk a lot after the game. I was just proud of Robert. I think he was proud of himself. Um, uh, you know, I think you saw it in the press conference. I mean, he's a great personality, and he just felt good, you know, that you look back in all those days when you're in the training room by yourselves or you're across the street at Gillum with, with the physical therapy people and, you know, just so much time just on your own, just you and and Andrew and the job that Andrew's done and, and Robert did. So I know it's got to be a great feeling for all those guys that get back, and then they see them – uh, impacting winning and playing well. So, yeah, we're, we were all proud of Robert and excited for him. And uh, last one from me. Um, you know, of course, this being kind of a weekend game, you know, there's a football game the next day. There's a basketball game here. You know, I'm sure there's expected a lot of, you know, students in, in, in the crowd, not just that, but just attendance as a whole. You know, how far does that go uh, for somebody who's been in the game for a while as far as the energy, as far as, you know, recruiting and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, you heard Lane talk about it early in the year, and uh, it's everything. I, I thought we had a great student crowd for kind of a later uh, start at 8 o'clock. I hope that just we, the student section is filled. You know, we've got a, a lot of recruits in uh, for our Friday night game that, that are very important in future classes. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's a big impact on when they come to a game live and they see a student body and they see arena uh, that's electric. We play a really good Florida Atlantic team that's going to have a chance to win the uh, Conference USA, a league that I was in. I watch them. They've got eight returning guys, a team that went to postseason last year, uh, very well coached, good players. And uh, so we need to be at our best. And uh, now as our team need to be at our best, our fans need to be at our best. And so we hope we have a, a tremendous crowd tomorrow night at six.